coming to you live from the top floor of the OBB Corporate Tower in downtown Coral Gables. You're listening to the top-rated American football podcast in countries that don't play American football. Ain't that some shit? These are the Orange Bowl Boys. Brought to you by Ed Morse. Join the over 2 million people that are backed by Morse. Visit edmorse.com. Here's Toast, Roman, and Scoop. Welcome to the Mario era, chapter 60. Sesente de Mario, it's a me, it's a Mario. Oh, my coach's staff is almost done. Oh, at the 11th hour, too. Hey, man. And, uh, <laughs> and I just followed the Orange Bowl Boys account. <laughs> Those guys are good. Oh, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Those, That's awesome. Uh, oh, hi, yeah, Eddie. So I was like, oh, boy. Is it, does he tune in today and listen to? Oh, I'm listening right now. <laughs> I'm actually joining. <laughs> I'm joining one of the shows right now, <laughs> bro. If he's following, then we're getting him on the show. <laughs> oh we have to reach out. We got to oh, get him on. We got to. We got to get Eddie O on as a guest. I'll hit him up. I'll hit him up. Absolutely. I would love he, to just chat with him for an hour. He's got, he, he's got to be open to it. If you follow, oh, he's got to have stories too. Oh, I'll talk to you about I would cheese love. burgers and women. <laughs> <laughs> cheese burgers. And I'll run on the beach. <laughs> uh, so oh, is that how we doing, boys? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, I don't know if you see my coffee mug, but oh, it's the greatest that. coffee well, mug of all time. Ooh. Mug. And and that is awesome. And when the and when the hot substance on the inside goes past this screen, uh-huh. goes, yeah, it, it, it turns the screen Zelda. live and it shows like Super Mario Brothers. This is the coolest thing. <laughs> nice. uh, so good. <laughs> Cheers. Somebody That's, knew you. That's a small that a tiny cup. cup that is a tiny yeah, cup, or did your hands myself, grow? Man, either a giant, and I was unaware. Or that's a really small cup. Wow. It, it's a it's a tad on the tiny side, but I am a tad on the bigger <laughs> side. So <laughs> just both of those work together and in tandem, and that's what you get. <laughs> All right. So um, so we got a full staff now, right? Mm, I don't know. We're not going to Green Tree yet. Let's talk. What else? Okay. Yeah. I mean, oh, you'll love this. Oh, this is great. So I'm in Tampa for a conference for work and the wife goes with me and we're there Monday. We got back yesterday and on Monday night, um, the crew that were at the, at the seminar wanted to have dinner together and they picked a Mexican restaurant and we were able to walk to it because it was across the street. In a fucking mall and again. I was just gonna like, ask dude. You. Like, what? The, I, I, we're walking. I'm like, I, I'm done. I'm done with Mexican restaurants at malls. I got to. This has to stop. This can't happen again. This is twice in a month. Oh my god. Was, was, was it, it any good? good? Yeah. It was significantly, significantly better than the Vero. Really? Yeah. Significantly, yes. This was actually a place like uh, uh, Basitas or something. I think it might be a chain. I don't know, but who knows? Hmm. But yeah, that was my week. Tampa. Oh, Tampa, dude. I'm sorry. Tampa. I know you that's your that's that's your place, Scoop, but ugh, I'm not a fan of Tampa. I I I moved back here after I went to school. There. I got you. Right, yeah. 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 And stay there. No, you didn't. I, I can see why. There. Yeah. Oof. It's uh yeah. It's a lot it's a lot of driving for not a lot. It's so <laughs> like the whole area is so expanded. Right? I mean, I yeah. went to USF. It's a which huge is footprint. Technically in Tampa, but yeah. it's so far from from downtown or the airport or any of that which is also considered tampa right uh-huh. it's, it's so big it's just it's ridiculous we uh we went uh on the way back because we watched the show we drove through clearwater to see the scientologists <laughs> oh <laughs> and we drove down that street fort harrison street where it's all just um fake buildings fake facades and then we saw all those in their little uniforms walking around. Crazy, man. Crazy. It's crazy. Did you see Tom like, Cruise? They're in a cult. Did you see Tom Cruise? No. no. He wasn't he jumping was on steeple. Oprah's couch? He was in the steeple, yeah. Yeah, nah. yeah I think he, yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, Ro, anything for you? Busy, man. <laughs> busy, that's it? Just, all just, right. Just busy. I'm a duber. Kids got me going everywhere. Well, let's, let's get on down to Green Tree, I guess, eh? I think we should. I-72. Go! So, welcome home, a member of the greatest team ever assembled, 2001 national champion, Kevin Beard, new wide receivers coach. Hells yes. Woo-hoo. 
stole him from. Listen, if you can't get Candle, get his guy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I will. I will say, and I don't think this is overstated. You cannot downplay this hire. This hire is the perfect hire. It's the perfect hire for what we got going on. He's a technician of a coach. He's an incredible recruiter. Creates fantastic rapport with these kids. I mean, you saw on on social media the responses from the top receivers in South Florida. They were the first ones to put it out. They love, love, love the hire, and it's yeah, huge. This is this is big. I would say the most important hire yet. Love it more than Shannon Dawson. That's correct. Okay, um, that's uh, that's that's a mighty big stretch. I, I like to hire as well. Um, again, kind of late in the ball game. Spring's going to start in three days or a couple days here. Two thousand one class member. Obviously, one of the conversations. The person who technically broke it was like Devonte. You know, like he's on the phone with a five star recruit wide receiver, and that's the guy who breaks the story. Essentially, saying, "Yeah, I'm going to be coming back home." So. He's doing his due diligence, going after some blue chip wide receivers, uh, coached on the field with Tennessee, was in the background with Georgia. So although he spent the last five years with Toledo as the wide receiver coach, fifth overall in the MAC, right, in terms of recruiting. So he does have some good recruiting chops, well respected in the the local area because, listen, listen, he's coming down here. He not he might not be targeting the same recruits that Miami's targeting when you're over there at Toledo. Um but essentially, guess what? You're still in those same schools recruiting those other guys, right? You still got to build that relationship with those coaches. You have that relationship with your coaches. Now you're just going to go ahead and escalate that to the top of the top players. Miami needs help with the wide receiver position. We need to recruit that position a little bit better. And I think Kevin Beard does that. Well, and, you know, you've got um, you got three really big time kids coming out locally in this cycle with uh, with Smith Robinson and then Trader. Um so you'd like to think that you know we got local kids down here just you got to keep at least one of them home. Yeah. Got to keep at least one of them home, man. So that's I mean and listen that's what's going to be judged on. How many drops these guys have during the season and whether or not he can bring in any five stars and, and he can out recruit Heartline. That's that's the judge. That's that's what you're being love, judged against. I love it because it is so true. How many drops they have in the season and how many yeah. blue chips you keep at home. That's as it. long as you keep some of them home and the guys don't drop the ball on Saturdays. Yes. <laughs> as long as you can beat Heartline to one guy and we don't have 10 drops in the game, bro, Beard, you're the guy. We love you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what you're what you're looking at now, I, I I think I do appreciate Mario because I do believe this time he's learned from last year, just assembling the best staff on paper, getting these reputable names. Obviously, didn't end well. You you have to realize that, you know, there was talks with Dawson about Beard. Dawson was first. Can you sign off on this? Because you're going to have to work with this guy more vigorously than I am. Um, what do you think? And I, I do appreciate that. The names, obviously, coming into this, when you get a former Broyles Award winner who who coached wide receivers at the same time, and you're getting guys like Charlie Strong in, now you're not seeing those names, but as long as these guys can have that synergistic effect with one another, they can still recruit. And look, Kevin Beard's going to have an added advantage he didn't have at Toledo, right? Uh, he's got Mario Cristobal to close. He didn't. Jason Candle's not closing the way Mario Cristobal can close with recruiting. So as long as he can build those relationships, early relationships, get those, get in the door, Mario can go ahead and seal the deal, and then we're off and running. And the other thing that's attractive for Kevin Beard recruiting this wide receiver group, which we didn't have last year, it's more advantageous to wide receivers. I mean, this is a more pass happy offense. This mm -hmm. is the the early reviews are in the the guys on staff who have been around Dawson now. Uh, some of the players they love it. Right, they they think it's going to put them in a much better situation, and this is the early reports. Now I know that happens, right? Every new coach is like, "Oh, it's, it's better than the last one. It's better than the last one." But the reality is, there was always concerns with Gaddis's passing tree. There was always concerns amongst people who follow film. There was concerns with Josh Pate, who are OBB alumni, who said about Gaddis. I don't think you're hearing that with Dawson. So we'll see what happens. Listen, I'll also know that uh, last year 
we had our number one, the, the dream for many Canes fans was to land the local kid, Innes. And at one point at the end of last season, he tweeted out mocking the Miami offense. Yes, it was horrible. I, I mean, like, that's like, I mean, so we need to get away from that. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we have. I think we have to. I think we have to. For those who haven't seen it, go on uh, OBB Legend. Uh, just posted an X's in a row there. Talk about the Kevin Beard hire. Also, we uh, broke down on the student of the game, the film review, doing good on YouTube as well. Numbers, take it over there. You get a get a look at the passing schemes, the passing concepts that Miami's probably going to go ahead and morph to uh, next season. A lot of leeway Scoop. in this offense. Mm-hmm. A lot of leeway. So I said it last week, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be repetitive on this. I need Tyler to have the ability to get out of bad plays and into good ones. And the more I hear coming from the streets, so to speak, down there, the more I believe wholeheartedly uh, that that is absolutely the case, that there is going to be a wide open ability for the players to be able to make the plays within the confines of the offense. Uh, and that's huge, man. You you have to be able to adjust. You have to be able to ad lib. You have to be able to be off platform, uh, like Rose says, as, as far as mechanics at times. Like you need to be able to just play football. These guys are are that's what they're used to, uh, and having the ability to be more freewheeling, so to speak, within the confines. I think you're going to see it, and I think it's going to be a huge advantage. You know what else is a benefit when you're hearing the early reports that there's going to be the ability to check out a bad plays? Your quarterback's health. Because let me remind the audience, and one of my more epic rants came from last year. Uh, bleep you, Hackett. Uh, <clears throat> essentially was noticing what was at the line of scrimmage and being able to check out of that call. Josh Gaddis had too much ego, right? My play is going to beat whatever they throw at me. But the reality is that's not the case. They're they're earning a paycheck, too, on the other side of the ball. Their defense is going to be formidable at times. Their call is going to be better than your call. But it's nice to know that at least you have a little bit of a humility aspect and realize, hey, guess what? This play is not going to work. It doesn't look well against this front. We don't have enough to block it. So I'm going to allow my quarterback to kind of check out of this, get out of the, get out of the right, right play call. And I've always said this. You trust him enough to run your offense. You trusted him enough – to go ahead and be uh, a scholarship-worthy quarterback, but you don't trust them enough to just make a simple decision like that. I don't like those prerogatives, and I'm glad, really, really glad, um, you know, Mr. Dawson is essentially going to go ahead and allow Tyler to do that because his health is on the line, right? He has to stay healthy. That gives him more of an opportunity to stay healthy. It really does. You might not see it that way, but it does. It. I, I've, I've witnessed that. I've lived through that. You have to be able to check out a bad calls, especially when a blitz is staring at you at the face. And in your in your in your heart, you know you don't have enough numbers to block it. Well, and also listen, man, I mean, um how much confidence and listen, this isn't a shot at uh at Chikari, but how much confidence do we have in what's behind Tyler right now in terms of on field production and experience? There isn't any. I mean, you know, you you lost you lost Garcia. I mean, unless you get a, I mean, you got to think there might be a portal guy coming in, just with a little bit more experience, right? Depth, I mean, just for depth. I think if Jakari yeah. gets off the offenses, you're looking at a ceiling, a ceiling now. If well, not, if Jakari mm-hmm. gets hurt, you the unfathomable happens and Tyler's hurt again. Uh, you're looking at like a 500 ceiling. If uh, yeah, you know, if Tyler doesn't get hurt, you 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 obviously have a bigger ceiling when Tyler's your quarterback. We've always known this. He needed to be in the right system. He is in the right system. But, yeah, I do have concerns. I do think you need to go ahead and get a portal quarterback. I really do. Where else, Ro, portal-wise, do you think – I mean, uh, I know a couple episodes ago I mentioned I wouldn't mind seeing um, them hit the portal for another defensive back or two. How about uh, maybe a running back? I mean, any other positions that you really think the portal needs to help, like two or three more additions? Running back, uh, I'm not opposed to it, but it's going to see who's healthy coming out of spring because we've been habitually snake bitten, especially from certain mm-hmm. guys uh, coming out of spring. We're at, we're at a dangerous spot now with Don Chaney Jr., uh, if he's hurt again, I don't think it. it it's too. You got to stop counting yes, on him. Yes, exactly. Unfortunately, Unfortunately yeah. and, and, and and injuries happen as part of the game. It's a vicious, brutal game, and this game has a sadistic sense of humor sometimes. 
But at that point, you're going to just have to cut your losses and move on because you just can't necessarily count on the young man being healthy. So a lot of a lot of it is there. How does Trevante Citizen come back off the injury? I mean, we saw it with Lorenzo. I don't know the scope of his injury. I don't know if he can come back healthy, which a lot of people do. Um, sometimes they even come back stronger. Uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes they don't in the case of Lorenzo Lingard. So you don't know what's there. So it's really going to depend on what are we doing injury-wise out of spring. Again, the wide receiver position, it would be nice to get. Now, I'm a little bit softened on the fact that the leading wide receiver for Dawson last year at Houston was essentially his kind of like a slot guy. A guy that's 165 pounds and 5'10". So you don't need that big burner per se, but that guy was real special. So he was able to get him open a lot of times in the slot. So I do like that, but it would be nice to have somebody on the outside uh, another Charleston Rambo type, so I'm going to go there. And then, obviously, the rest of the plug and place. I'll take everybody on the defensive side of the ball toast. I'll take a defensive end, a linebacker, corner, you name it. Just bring it in. If they're if they're quality starters, I think they should bolster that defensive side of the ball that way. I, I mean, part of me, last year, and I know Tyler got hurt right after, but, man, the offense, losing X that early was awful. Mm-hmm. Was all, He's the security blanket, and he went down first, and he missed what, seven games? Yeah. Eight games? He, he missed. Like, something like that. At least he six. Yeah, it was, he missed the season. Oof. I mean, he, he basically missed the season, yes. I mean, that's the reality. So, Look, I, and I think, and, and real, I think you'll get your wish. I think I think uh, Colby Young, I think, is is going to be legit on the outside. And, and you saw the numbers, right? I was shocked, to be honest with you, um, by two names on the speed numbers. Number one, him Mm -hmm. i i I didn't think that he had that type of top end speed um which he does at that size of a kid Mm -hmm. um can really be formidable on the outside isaiah horton i think is going to have a big year as well and then bobby washington Mm -hmm. on the opposite side running that type of speed i was like wait what that's a he's a linebacker right am i that's this isn't a robbie this is bobby I was like, holy crap, we haven't had a linebacker with that type of speed in a really long time. So uh, that was nice to see, right? So at least you're, you're you know, it, it, it's paper stuff, but I like paper stuff that kind of surprises you. Um, and those two definitely stood out to me as surprising. Listen, paper is paper, but there there is proof in the paper, right? I mean, you get f- speed translates on the field. Sometimes it doesn't, but I much rather take my chances with speed. I mean, on the speed kills baby. On the hitting side of a thing, you know, if I got a guy hitting 70 miles per hour or swinging 70 miles per hour and the other guy's swinging 60, uh, give me the guy that's throwing 70. He has more of a capability to do more damage on the baseball. It's just simple physics. So more ground to cover. I've always felt last few seasons we've been slow at the linebacker position, so I'm glad to see that Washington's going to fit the bill because we definitely need speed at the linebacker position. I think it's one of the more egregious holes that shows up from film study week to week. It's just how we're un- unable to cover the ground and really do uh, a lot of coverage responsibility, especially on slot guys when we have certain personnel out there. Let me ask you a question because obviously – you know, we know how things went with this staff last year when you kind of went out and got some big names and Kevin Steele and the Broyles Award winner. And you and you got you got some names. You just sold some guys from bigger programs and whatnot. Would Mario have been able to have this staff his first year? Like would the fan base have been all in on a Shannon Dawson hire and a Lance Guidry hire first year? As opposed to the big names that he did get. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, where would the fan base have come down on this staff? Year one. That is a that is a brilliant question. I gotta be honest. That is that might be the best question you've ever asked on this show. And this fan base would have lost their collective shit. Yes, they would have. <laughs> no yes, they chance would have. it would have gone over well. <laughs> because let's be that's, honest. That's such a good question. And we got the DC from so, Marshall, really? They would have burned the place down. <laughs> I think it took the first year to make this one more like palatable, right? Hundred percent. So, yeah, <laughs> so true. Would have been a riot in the streets. Oh, absolutely. We lost him. We lost. Yes, Ro. we lost Roe. Lord Rogan. <laughs> oh shit! He yeah. just. <laughs> Damn it, man! He Hold on, I got it. a missing row. Hold on, I got missing row. Hold on, there we go, missing row. I don't know. Now there's two of them. I don't see either one of them. Oh yeah! Oh, you're not seeing the yeah no yeah on the on the on the stream. It's missing row. It's you, me, and missing row. Yeah, 
a, yep. a still. He went bye bye. <laughs> he went bye bye. All right. Yeah, I've got two of them. We'll see if he gets back in. Two All good. Rows. Multiple rows, huh? All right. Two misters. Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I was thinking about that on the, on the drive home across the alley so yesterday. True. I'm like, man. So true. So true. I'm like, this fan base. If this was the staff that he brought in last year with a bunch of G5s, holy fuck, they would have revolted. Would have questioned. Oh. Everybody would have everything. questioned everything. Everything. They would have yeah. questioned everything. To yeah, yes. everything. Yes. It would have been so bad. And then, oh my and goodness. Then to take it a step further. If you have the results last year after oh. those hires, we'd have to quit the show. No, we this, this pod wouldn't be having a this season. No, no, way. no. Like we would have like, put it in mothballs. Like, I mean, like we would have nothing to talk about. Did you hear that part, Ro? Mm-mm. You said took it a step further. And if we would have had the production and the results last year with oh, yeah, the yeah. staff, Burn it down. are you kidding? Burn it right? down. This you pod wouldn't be happening. How bad that would have been. I, I I even think Manny would have took some flack for assembling the staff that he just did. I you would have heard under Manny's watch if these are the coaches that he hired. Oh, we'll never be great because they'll never open up the paycheck, uh, you know, or the the, mm-hmm. the pocketbook to go ahead and, and yeah. amass the staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you know, you, you just gotta have some patience, use some eyes. Look at it. I was going to say, film don't lie, right? Look at it objectively. I think, I've said it, I think the Gidry hire is going to pay off. Big time. Big time. I I think that system is really, really difficult. So, well, so here's the other side of it. So now we believe that he has a better, more cohesive staff this year, right, than last year. Mm -hmm. Not as many egos, more of a hierarchy, this and that. You don't have a former head coach as a linebacker's coach, this and that. Um this team last year, we all agreed had a higher ceiling, right? Mm-hmm. So, man, ah, I'm trying to figure out what is the number. I mean, is it, man, like, where's the consensus going to be around this team going into spring? Are we talking six wins, seven wins? Like, where's the fan base going to coalesce? What number are they going to coalesce around? I think between six and eight is where it's going to yeah. settle. Okay. You know, six I think that's reasonable. And it's not, it doesn't make you happy, but it's reasonable. And your hope is listen, nobody pro, uh, projected Florida State to do those things last year. No. Uh, and obviously they had a great season. So it's not w- outside the realm of possibility. Uh, 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 Florida State didn't beat a team that had a winning record. Oh, I, I told you. But still, um, Miami lost to Middle Tennessee State. So the, no, I'm just saying. You said no. great. And Florida State beat like, us by like 77. Yeah. On yeah, and they beat us yeah. terribly. And, and and listen, that was the nail in the coffin. If you ask yeah. us when they decided to go ahead and blow that staff up, it was shortly after that Florida State game. And then going Ten, into class. Here's here's the thing. I think that the ceiling, like you said, the ceiling is high. If Tyler's healthy and this system offensively clicks, because it can, right? You've seen turnover in year one in systems where kids have just been able to just just fall into place, and it's productive, and it's efficient, and they can score yeah, TCU. in the How red you doing? zone. So <laughs> if they can score, which we think they will, with, an, with a tremendously improved offensive line, Tyler healthy, kids running – Routes mm-hmm. that in route trees that are air raid by philosophy, they can score. They can score, and I, I, I'm not saying that they're going to win nine or ten games. I'm saying that the ceiling, the potential, absolutely is there. I think Mario came under a realization that hey, they did struggle to throw the football. They did struggle to go ahead and put up points. There was times that they ran the ball effectively, and I think Mario got Dawson to take care of the passing side, but he was impressed with how well he had an understanding of the run game. And I think in Mario's heart, between him, Mirabal, they're going to get the run game going, right? They're going to get, but they needed help on that passing side and putting up points and doing that. So hopefully the the, the marriage of the two, you're going to see a better uh, iteration of this Dawson offense with Mario in tow to help with the running game aspects because that's one thing I did want to see pick up from watching all the games from Houston last year. Do want to see some run game diversity. That was something I asked for under the Lashley years. You know, sometimes it could get a little bit predictable. 
but I, I think Mario can help with that. So we'll, we'll see. Cause like you said, scoop, you know, the air raid pass concepts, you know, being aggressive, some, some of the RPO elements, some of the options off things. This is what that Tyler is going to do really well with. I thought I saw a photo of coach Mirabal with the offensive line. I think he took them out to five guys. Mm. That bill was still probably heavy. What's that fucking bill look like, bro? <laughs> when you bring seven or eight offensive linemen to five guys. Mm, yeah. Like, holy Jesus. Yeah. I'm guessing that's got to be at least like 30 burgers. Unpopular take. I, I don't know where you sit on five guys. Five it's guys is disgusting. nothing more than overpriced Wendy's. Yeah. Bro, it's, it's, yeah, it's, no, it absolutely, hundred percent. It's so much worse than Wendy's. Stop. Tra- well, yeah, it's because disgusting. they charge more and it's the same. Yeah, it's overpriced disgusting. Wendy's. Yeah, the, you the, can't yeah. even eat half the burger. No, it's so greasy, greasy as hell. Yeah, oh, so greasy. Yeah, oh, totally so greasy. I had it one time. Yep. Me too. One time. Never one went back. Time and it was probably twice. Fifteen years ago. Burger and fries. I, said, I will so much never better. eat this garbage oh. again. Burger fries. Dude, so I was much told. Better. Someone told. I'll oh, do five guys. You'll swear by the best thing. I went there once. I've never been back. Yeah, like ten years ago. So yeah, burger fry. So bad. Yeah, burger fry is good. It is good. It's good. There's no Shake Shack, but it's good. See, we don't have a Shake Shack near us. There's one in Boca. You no, know we do have. We have a Habit Burger. Habit Burger is not bad. bad. That's pretty good. Habit Burger is not that's bad. Way better than Five mm-hmm. Guys too. Yes, yes, it is. I still 100%. haven't. I have to go to the. Uh, I got to get the Culvers. Yes, you do, bro. <laughs> yes, you absolutely. And you see on social, folks had my back on that man. They're like, yeah, I dude, know. you got to. It's in Margate. I, There's one in Margate. I will. I will make my way over there. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred. You'll love it. Yeah. There was actually. Yeah, we saw a few of those over in uh, the Tampa area because all the Midwesterners. So obviously, Culver's over, bro. <laughs> Scoop driving down. I don't know the equivalent of A one A, right? And just the amount, like, bro, I didn't realize it is really touristy over there. Like, it's not nearly as touristy over here as like all I saw. What like for everyone rides bikes over there. And then everyone is, it was like 65, 70 wearing either an Indiana, an Iowa t shirt, or a Michigan t shirt, Ohio State. <laughs> like it was all just, I'm like, damn. Did you ever hear and a lot they of were, fucking they people? Were melting. Let, let me ask you a yes. question. Though. Because of how hot it's been this Toast, week. Toast, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Right? This is going to maybe, this line of questions is going to set off a <laughs> oh boy. Set of population. Uh, all right. Did you notice that the people out there were nicer or ruder? than over here or more rude than over here oh nicer and and somebody told yeah. me that somebody told me why because i never i was like man you guys are so much nicer on this coast than my coast back east and they said well listen here's the issue he goes when florida got settled on the atlantic all the east coast railways came down from like new york and the east coast side mm-hmm. on the west side it came in from the midwest so you know a lot mm-hmm. of like illinois and stuff like that he goes we don't have the new yorkers you have and I'm yeah. like, 100%. Yeah, there you go, New Yorkers. <laughs> if, you want to know why the West Broward Coast? Broward and Dade. Look, if any New Yorker has a problem with that statement, they're not a true New Yorker. Yeah. Dude, Broward and Dade is the, is, the, is the sixth borough. <laughs> yeah, the proudest. fifth borough, whatever the fuck it is. Six. Yeah, it is. Like, it's the, the sixth borough. The assholes. Like, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. I, I One of the best shirts I ever saw was Don't New York My Florida. <laughs> So, so scoop it's a good shirt we go to breakfast yesterday over there and i opened the door for a lady and she said thank you of course you. she did well of course she did yeah. of course she did she's she's well met and then i had there's some guy that, oh it was some guy that came at us on tour says i don't don't open the door for me if you're looking for a thank you because you opened the door for me that i don't need dude wow be a decent I mean, human the being the ability for you guys to un they're the inability, inability for you guys to understand what I'm saying. I open it because it's in my nature. Like I'm, I'm not like, ooh, let's go open a door so I can get a thank you today. Yes, I'd rather, that's what we all do. I'd rather yeah. not interact with you. To be quite honest with you, I don't want interaction with anybody. But by nature, I go and I, I hold the door for people. It's just, it's innate, right? Because I was brought up to not be a jerk. So I'm not looking for anything. I'd prefer to stay home. But I have to go out into this world and mingle and, and, and interact. I'm not looking for it. So don't come at me thinking that I'm looking for something from you. Don't care, pal. What I'm saying is, if I happen to do it innately, be kind. That's all. Be great. Mm-hmm. Be gracious. I say thank you. 
So <clears throat> I just had a meeting with Tao Tao. They, they have an annual meeting with your, their coach on this team that she's on. And they thanked us as parents because she's well-rounded and everything like this. And I'm like, it was a very appreciative thing. The skill set aside, that's what you want to hear as a father. But they're like, hey, whatever you're doing, continue to do it up. And, you know, you know feel, feel free to give advice because we have small children. And I was like, oh, cool, cool. But the other day, like I take my daughter out to breakfast, I hold the door for her on the truck. I open the door. I open the door for her. Too. You know, she tells me, thank you. It's like, you're welcome, daughter. It's not hard. <laughs> I, do I have to? She's got arms. I know you got arms, people. I know you can open your own door. It's just a sign of courtesy, right? It Am is. Am I teaching my daughter that she needs to depend on a – no, I'm not. I'm just being a gentleman because my oh. grandmother taught me to be – <laughs> so listen, my grandmother, right, she was old school Connecticut, like, you know, like blue block kind of a thing. Yeah, she baby. She would sit – I would have to open the door for her as a young man like okay to get in the car but she took it a step further when we got to where we got to she would not even move until oh, i went oh, around yeah. to open the door for uh -huh. her to go like, around and open the door yeah 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 <laughs> and even as a little kid i even thought that one was excessive <laughs> <laughs> but i still I mean, did it was right there i still did it i still did it, <laughs> it so all right so um after last week's episode um moving on from uh from football here for a moment uh, the NCAA came down and threw some infractions at our beloved university. Uh, they decided that in the NIL era, uh, with all the money that's being splashed around between football and men's basketball, that they should target the Cavender Twins as their first NIL uh, infractions, folks. And um, so basically what happened is, from everything that I'm reading and getting, is that Miami just agreed to this just to shut them up with basically no penalties except for just, you know, probation for a year. Um, but that Miami doesn't believe that they did anything wrong. And I'll be honest, bro, the fact that the NCAA decided to target the, the of everybody in college sports, baseball, football, basketball, everybody, everybody, there's two individuals that have the social media following and reach to warn any national brand paying them seven figures. And their names are Hannah and Haley Cavender. Only two athletes in all of college sports. Thousands of athletes, only two of them, have a social media reach that warrants that sort of a deal. And that's who you targeted the first time out. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, they're funny. NCAA's funny. I mean, funny. Florida bounced a check for $13 million. Texas A&M spent $50 million, apparently, for a fucking uh, recruiting class last year. Um, you got a kid in Tennessee, Tennessee, who has 150,000 followers, getting $2 million a year, and you go after these two young ladies. It's a fucking joke. It's always a joke. They have a thing for what Miami. We know this. Oh, we do. We it's are rent free, like funny, thirty maybe. bedrooms and twenty baths. You know, it's crazy. in their head. And listen, it's crazy to me. If we if we did it under like ambiguity, under the guise of like, you know, chill, <laughs> mm -hmm. we have a a major nil force in Mr. John Rui is he's he's not about that life he, he's a little bit more ostentatious and showy very calculated smart businessman lawyer he's got that Miami swag that we love that we enjoy he's got that bravado and that's what the NCA double NC2A that's what they targeted that's what they targeted they targeted his yep. bravado they just went after the peacock because they don't like the peacock's feathers like you just, Toast just admitted, like, listen, there's more egregious cases of what's going on. But the fact that he comes out and he says things and he has a, a, a voice on Twitter and that he's great at marketing himself and branding himself. And like I said, he's more Miami culture than you realize. And that's why they can't stand it. And that's why they targeted him. And by default, I think through proxy, they went after the Cavender twins, which was sad, which was sad because like well, you said, Toast. It's not like these girls needed to struggle to get anything because of the amount of influence and reach that they have. Well, and that's the thing. Like to think that they chose the college based on NIL deals is ridiculous because they don't need the local NIL deals, man. They we listen, we spoke to their dad for an hour. They're here because of Coach Meyer. She sold the hell out of them. She recruited the hell out of those two. And and they and they bought in, and that's why they're there. Um it's just, it's absolutely insane, bro. It's absolutely insane. But whatever, man. Whatever not, with the NCAA. Not, I mean, not at all surprising or unexpected. 
No, no, it's, I mean, it's sad. Just the way it goes. <laughs> I mean, you knew, you knew uh, it was coming in some capacity. So no, hundred percent. And listen, I'll tell you what. Uh, the other end that I'll say is, you remember when Ruiz mentioned that they had lunch with the, when the NCAA, like back in like June or whatever, they came down here and they met with him or whatever. They went over all these one hundred NIL deals that he signed. And they didn't find a fucking thing. Exactly. If not one fucking thing wrong with any of them, because you know they would have they would have thrown the book at them. They they went through over a hundred nil deals and didn't find one thing wrong. Not one. The worst what they got was they got a, a text that an excited coach sent to a booster, and that at the time wasn't illegal. They hadn't clarified that rule yet. They clarified it after she sent sent that text. Ridiculous. Which goes to show you we did nothing wrong because if that's the most that they we've been oh. we've been at this for so long right we've been at this for so long we know what the NCAA is capable of and what they're willing to do when they couldn't do this this is all we got you know how many times Alabama under the cover of night will say oh level two infractions noticed uh, you know they're on probation you don't even notice it you don't even notice it same thing same thing with us you you found nothing you found nothing John Snow you know nothing John Snow. Found nothing. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you guys this. Because it seems like it's been happening a lot the last couple of years. Do we need to have a coach hiring window in college football? I see where you're going. It seems like we've had a lot more situations of guys getting a gig and then two weeks later getting another gig. <laughs> I mean, we did it this year to uh, Lance Guidry. Um, but, like, does there need to be a season? Yes and no. But only for the – for Lance Guidry's purposes, I mean, he, that's a promotion, right? You go from, you know, where you're heading to now you're going to be the defensive coordinator for a Power 5 program. So I see what you're doing. I, I I think it needs to tie in with the recruiting aspect because some of these kids commit and then their coaches leave. So that one I could see something to be worked out. But as far as these guys using that to go to another job, as long as that school is willing to pay the buyout, I I, I got no problem with it. Zero. Scoop, you're good. Yeah, I, I don't think he can. Yeah. All right. There's too, there's too many moving parts. I got gotcha. you. You know. I got gotcha. you. It's, it's the, it, there's too, there's there's too much going on. I mean, you can you can apply right. for a job and, and want to switch jobs and whatever at any time. Throughout the, it, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You can leave in summer if you want to. I mean, you can't you can't restrict it. It's like you can't restrict a kid now from leaving. You can't restrict a coach if he wants to go somewhere else. All right, so we got um, ACC tournament is going to be uh, getting underway uh, next week, um, and then we're going to have the uh, NCAA tournament. So the Canes, dude, bro, that FS. Hold on, do, does the brutal. Canes basketball team still have a chance to win the ACC regular title? Uh, yes, I believe if they knock off Pittsburgh, then they could still control because Virginia lost. Right, but how many games does Pitt have left? Uh, Pitt had, I believe, let me pull it up. Hold on. So does Pitt have, hold on. Does, does, is, is it in Miami's? So right now, Miami, oh, oh, Pitt lost. So right now, Miami, Virginia, Pittsburgh are all tied at 14 and five in the conference. So this is for the, this is for it. This is, this is for it. This is for the title. This is for the regular season. Number one seed in the tourney. That's interesting. And a double buy. So that's what the, yes, double buy. Yeah. You know, which brings me up to a. A tweet that I put out line and, you know, obviously a li- not a huge firestorm from it, but I-, I said something. Some people agreed with it. Some people thought it wasn't fair, especially towards the baseball team. But I said, listen, that Miami FSU loss in basketball. I said the Miami Middle Tennessee loss in football, right? And FAU. Now, listen, out of all the, out of all the sports, right? I'm just saying on paper – each of the respective sports, Miami baseball should have beat FAU. Miami basketball should have just decimated FSU and then Middle Tennessee. And all the sports, I'm going to give the biggest pass to baseball. And I knew that going into it when I made that tweet because baseball is a difficult game and FAU is no slouch, mm-hmm. right? I'm just saying on paper, on paper is what I was trying to emphasize. And to the casual fan, you know, baseball, you should beat FAU. That's terrible. How do you not beat FAU? FAU is good, right? There's a lot of great baseball players in South Florida. Man, I watched a local high school game. Both of the starting pitchers were bringing it well over 90 miles an hour. I'm just like, okay. I mean, that's I, th- those were unicorns back when I played, but that's just the way right. baseball is. But the point was, I just want Miami to get to the point where when they're that much of a favorite on paper, they don't lose those games. 
it's like I'm okay with teams losing. It's it's competitive nature. It's sports. You're not always going to – but like the big ones. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're seven-point favorite and you lose. I got no problem with that. But when you blow a 23-point lead at half to a, a terrible Florida State team or you lose to Middle Tennessee State when you were favored by 21 points – those are the inexcusable losses that at a certain point, I don't know what the coaches need to do in their respective sports, but they got to like, you know, stop the hemorrhaging in those moments. They got to be able to adapt and overcome as much parity as you think there is in college football. You still can't lose the games to middle Tennessee state because it sets you back so bad. Like the, 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 the basketball less, like it just puts such a bad taste in everybody's mouth. It still does. It's what it toast just brought it up. That Florida state law. It was like a week ago. You know, we're still talking about Metal Tennessee. Me- meaningless. Oh, God, I know. Yeah, all right. Well, it, 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 it turned out to be meaningless, but it wasn't meaningless when you tweeted that out, asshole. Okay? That's totally, <laughs> that's totally not true. You tweeted it out it before it Pitt lost. It wasn't in Virginia. It wasn't meaningless. It was, it was meaningless. Um, it was meaningless. You're so, right. But I do want to say there's a word, Scoop, I don't think you can defend. It was meaningless, but it was unnecessary. It was an yeah, unnecessary I loss. Said, I said it was, it was yes. brutal. I said it was meaningless, but it was brutal. Like, that's a brutal loss. But in the big picture, it doesn't matter. And then, whoo, man, that was that tweet. Went <laughs> well, suddenly, suddenly a bunch what, of Kane fans were like, all right, I know college basketball. Yeah, Let's I, talk. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm aware how yeah. this works. <laughs> I'm pretty, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, pretty in tune with what's going on. Uh, so I did egg some <laughs> of you guys on because you couldn't help yourself. And I just put you down the rabbit hole. But in the big scheme, and I said the big picture the big picture, you're 22 and five, right? If you don't have aspirations of, of winning a national championship, the big picture, that's that's the big picture, right? You're 22 and five. Like, I think that you should think that you might have a chance to win the Natty. So right. that being the case, I, I don't care about seeding. I don't care. To Rose, all the games. Uh, to Rose point, bro, like baseball's different. Like how many t- how yeah. many times... How many times Canes were riding we're riding a seven game winning streak? How many times do teams win eight in a row in baseball? Doesn't happen. Like you like uh, when you're at seven, chances are you're gonna lose one of the next couple of games. Yeah. The, regardless of who you're playing. You can't beat regardless. Up you and anyway. it was you haven't done it in ten years. And it was dude, it was six to five loss. You were winning. They the bullpen gave up two in the seventh. That's why I mean Chestnut still had a quality start. FAU is a good team, bro. They're seven and one. I'll be hundred like, percent honest. I'm gonna give more backdrop to that tweet. It came, I, I indicted and I roped in the baseball team unnecessarily to those yeah. losses because they weren't the same because my boys just blew a six-run last-inning lead. <laughs> so I was oh. already salty. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, a little personal experience. Yeah, so, I got gotcha. Oh, because our closer comes <laughs> in. So fresh. Our closer comes in and the kid hits a like line drive ground ball off his shin. So we had to take him out and then we just kind of fell apart. Oh. I was like, oh, no. Oh. It, was, Listen. it was against a good team, too. When it comes to uh, when it comes to baseball, these first uh, nine games were basically the warm up. Mm-hmm. I mean, Dartmouth hadn't played yet. Now we got through FAU this weekend at Gainesville. It's game on. Now we're going to find out. You go up there and you take two or three. Then I'm believing in everything that, that I've been people, seeing. Two of three. That's a win in baseball. It's yes. Three and zero. Yes. Would you like to sweep no. the series? No. Win the series, bro. Yeah, right. That's and it. Listen, and on that baseball team too, we got to see how Gage is going to do. I mean, it's two starts. Listen, he he settled in after his second start and he did okay. But after that first start, I have some concerns. Concerns. Is Legon going to go ahead and maybe leap him? I think he's had two quality back to back starts. Uh, Rosario has uh, had a couple, you know, nice starts as well, too. But, you know, last year, a little bit different because you turn around and you, you had such an effective, effective, like Friday starter. Right. Uh, and you took him out of the pen. So you, you you wanted to see similarities there this year. But we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I, Ro, I got uh, I got faith in Gage. I mean, that uh, that second start. After the second inning where he gave up the four, he didn't allow a base runner the ne- the rest of the way, mm-hmm. and, he, and he got through five. And that one inning where he gave – dude, it was a strikeout, and then it was a single, then it was a strikeout, and then it was a single. So it was, And then there, it, just, it was just one of those innings that just a few hits kind of just landed in the right spot, and it kind of all of a sudden turned into four runs. Um, I still – dude, but what I saw in the third, fourth, and fifth inning from him, dude, he was nasty, yeah. and he no one even got close to getting on base. So I think he's – getting into his zone yeah and, and listen but lagoon has been amazing yeah but after the first <laughs> listen after the first first start i knew that the staff had full confidence in him they were like no that was the mm-hmm. worst start of his life 
Uh, we know what he's capable of. I mean, he was elected to be the Friday night starter, right? That's that's huge yeah. praise. That's where your best pitcher goes in college baseball. Um, so uh, we'll see. I mean, the bats still stay hot. Ian Farrow, even though we lost to FAU, five for five. Uh, so, mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of what we were expecting, bringing him over from Florida Gulf Coast. The University of Miami, fifth in the nation in home runs. Fifth. Dude, yeah, they're just bomb yeah. squad. Like Zagaki, you got to come up with a call, bro. But, you have see, to. The thing that I'm, I mean, because every time you watch them, they're hitting bombs. But I'm like, what are the other yes. four schools? <laughs> they must be hitting home runs every other at right? bat. Like, this is insane. This is insane because every time I watch a Miami Hurricane game, we're hitting about three to five home runs a game. It's insane. Hit stick. Yeah, baby. All right. Anything else you boys want to uh, get to before we uh, talk about our dear friends? Let's talk about dear friends. Let's talk about dear friends, man. Uh, as always, we start with uh, the grandest of them all, edmorse.com. If you are looking for a four-wheeled vehicle, that's where you want to turn. But then if you're looking for a two-wheeler, Eddie can hook you up. I mean, Teddy can hook you up with the, Eddie. Teddy can hook you up with the Harley Davidson in Daytona Beach. You know, so whether you want a hog, Bike yeah. up there. They oh, dude. He's cleaning a house this weekend. He just he just rode up there yesterday. Nice. Just rode nice. up yesterday, gets his uh his first official bike week as owner of Teddy Morse's Harley Davidson Daytona. It's incredible. It's, it's That's amazing. Sick, bro. He said, All he, he has said, to do I, now, I listen. I still cannot believe. All he has to do now, he's got the Daytona dealership. In a couple of years, he needs to buy the Sturgis one, and then he's got them both. Oh. Right. I mean, then he's then he's got both of them. Wow. <laughs> I'd crazy. love to ride a hog to Sturgis fun. one year. Not all the way. That would be here. insane. I, I mean, no, 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 no. I'd like, yeah, trailer it till about 100 miles out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Edmores.com, people, if you want to get a car, uh, you can do it right there. All the brands, everything, the price protection promise. Uh, they have been backing us for a number of years now, and we absolutely love them. Tell them the Orange Bowl boys sent you. It is edmorse.com. So I'm not top row watching. I'm actually more on the bottom row, and I'm over here at Kane's where Kane's player shirts. And I, I just laugh at all the Tyler Van Dyme stuff. That's a great slogan moniker that was that was, that was uh, who, who came up yeah. with that someone should have trademarked but that. i am gonna have to give a little advice because we yeah. still got some jalen knight and rooster t-shirts and al, ba al blades chant t-shirts so, so we might want to you might want to <laughs> update that there on the bottom but if you buy a lot of those uh, uh items from the players and this nice james williams autograph mini helmet orange flash 100 bucks with the autograph you do that you got free shipping Canes were at 2511 South University Drive in Davie, Florida, 33324. Call them, 954-835-5597. They'll hook you up. Uh, the balls, boys. The balls, the balls, the testicles. You don't think about them nearly as often as you should. should. I mean, seriously, just, you know, if you're wearing shorts or drawstring right now, go ahead and take a peek mm -hmm. and just see if you're seeing, like, shrubbery down there. Because you got to keep that trimmed, bro. Listen, uh, as you can tell from this week, it's getting to be 90 degrees again. Winter is fucking over, which means there's going to be high humidity in the crotch area. You need to be taking care of your balls so they're happy. There's no chafing. You got to put on the ball deodorant. You got to put on the lotion. You got to use the trimmer and make sure that uh, you know that shrub is trimmed back very nicely so you don't get any stink going on down there. It's all about Manscaped, man. And promo code OBB gets you a discount on anything on the entire site. 20% off. OBB. That'll hook you up, too. Thank you, Toast. Your balls will love Thank you. Thank you, Toast. Thank you, Toast. So we usually talk about balls, and then we talk about packages. Packages. Yes. Balls Went for packages. Scoop to talk about the packages. Yeah. Beating the Bookie. Beatingthebookie.com is where you get all of your packages. Uh, golf, which is, is on now. Actually... The Puerto Rico Open is on now. So you got Bay Hill this week and the Puerto Rico Open, both PGA events. Isn't uh, our boy Puerto in Puerto Rico? He is. He is currently tied for 10th, two under through uh, nice. 10 on uh, round one of the Puerto Rico Open. That's just Andrew Novak, on, boys. That's Andrew Novak. That's who Andrew you root for. Andrew Novak, the, the dude. Yeah, it just came up. Um, but, yeah, so you have uh, the Twitter. You have the Instagram. You have the ticker talker. All at beating the bookie in on the site, he's got the free plays, which he puts out every single day. You've got soccer. You've got the golf cranking up. You've got um, what else we got? We got NCAA basketball. Yeah, March Madness, March bro. Madness coming up. Oh, come on. Guys, go 
get your package. Get, if you want to do it for just March Madness, you can do it for 30 days, what have you. Uh, remember that golf is always by Thursday morning or Wednesday night, and you get one package for the weekend, uh, and then it's updated each day. Beatinthebookie.com is where you get it and take it where. Where do you go? You're going to go to uh, whatever app store you go to, and you're going to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, and you're going to sign up, make an account, and you're going to use promo code TPPN. And as a result, when you make your first deposit, you're going to get, this is insane, a risk-free bet up to $1,000 that you can put on March Madness or uh, the Canes in the ACC basketball tournament, whatever it is. That's promo code TPPN, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. And admit it. Yes. You going to talk some beer, too, or no? Oh, whoa. We didn't talk any beer. Let's talk beer. Fucking beer, bro. Yes. Beer. See. All of it. And and good beer. Loca. Freedom Tower. You know, we were told, you know, it's a seasonal beer. But it's got to be getting close to Frank the Tank season. It has to, yes, it it has to be. I think so. <laughs> You'd like to think. I think so. You'd like to think. Listen, guys, the Tank Brewery, uh, the premier brewery in South Florida, especially down in Dade, and their whole complex is insane. Great place just to go. And listen, if you want to find a place to hole up on Thursday and Friday of next week for March Madness, <laughs> the Tank Brewery, with all the TVs, with the menu, with all idea. the beverages, that is where you want to set up shop and watch March Madness all friggin' day, Thursday and Friday, from that noon until midnight thing. That's where you want to go. Uh, the Tank Brewery has been with us for a couple of years. We love those guys. Uh, we'll be down there at some point doing another broadcast. Uh, but the Tank Brewery, go check them out. Five questions. There we go. Five questions. I, am, uh, I think I got some good ones today, Toasty. Oh, yay. Go, go, go. Number one, you wouldn't marry a person of which profession? Oh, um, which, wow. I'll be honest. I don't know if I could be married to a cop. Okay. Okay. That makes total sense. Yeah. I, would, I, I was going to say attorney. I, I think there's probably too much deliberation, especially a divorce attorney. <laughs> that, that's scary. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to say, it's, it's, especially these days, there's no way in, in hell I could marry a politician. I got gotcha. you. No way. I, 100%. Yeah, I'm right there with I you. Mean, right there with like you. An, yeah. that's, is that a job? <laughs> I wasn't even, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't it's even not an sure effective one, like but they true, get paid. If that's a true like answer. Yeah. You might have to go with attorney. Attorney? Yeah. Who are you going with, Scoop? He said attorney. I would say an accountant. <laughs> Ooh. Well, that could help you in your business. Yes. yes. But on a daily existence, my God, would that be boring? Oh, sure it would. Yeah. Like, I, I no. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> but do you think accountants are really like coming home every day and talking numbers with their spouse or They're with their just partner? so mundane. Yeah. Like, like I'm generalizing. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. I mean, my goodness. Have you ever had conversations with accountants? Yeah. I try not to. I don't really it's, know any. It's, I mean, it's, there's a reason for tough. that. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got another one. There's going to be an okay. obvious answer, and you can use the obvious answer, but I still love the question. What fictional bar would you like to have a drink in? I won't say that. I won't say I won't the popular answer. Either, yeah. yeah. All right. For me, what fictional I'll bar? I'll go. I want to have a drink. And the Star Wars Cantina on Tatooine. Oh, bro. That is <laughs> awesome. Good. That That's was really fucking good. awesome. Oh, <laughs> I got one. I want to have a drink at the bar on Mars with a girl with the three breasts. <laughs> there you go. You make me wish I had a third <laughs> hand. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, <go. laughs> Oh, my goodness. I was so, it was so hard because there's the obvious one, and we can't go there. Uh, and I don't know if I know another one. Well, I think if you think of the animated series, that would have been my number two. I would love to have a drink at Moe's. <laughs> oh, there you go. Simpsons. There you go. That's a good one, too. I want to just walk in and walk out. I want to walk in, put my hat 
turn around and grab mm-hmm. my hat and walk out. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you Just go. Like yeah. The dad. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Just Too loud like the here. dad. Got to go. All right. Um, number three. Fun question. What are some benefits of being unattractive? <laughs> Benefits of being unattractive. Well, I think people always hold the door for you, right? <laughs> they feel sorry for you. <laughs> uh, you're not going to get stalked at the gym. There's my answer. Okay. And no dude's going to, you know, this, take the yeah, phone. I mean, and... I have to come up with an. I have to come up with an answer, or I'm a like a total douchebag. So thanks. For yes, 100. percent Yes. Yes. An advantage. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Are you googling it? No, I try. I'm legitimately trying to think of one. I, I'm going with row. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you one. I'll give you one. Give me one. I wouldn't mind a, a current one that you might know. I wouldn't mind having a drink in that uh, the bar from Top Gun Maverick. Oh, yeah. Cool the, what's her name? Jennifer Connelly owned. Yes. Jennifer yeah. Connelly owned. Bring, bring, bring. I'd absolutely bring, go bring that belt pound in. drinks in there for a night. Right on the water. All right. On the beach. So then on the next question, you used my answer and said nobody's going to stock you at the gym. All right. This one's a little bit more tricky, but. I like it. I don't appreciate that, by the way. What are some psychology tricks you use every day? (laughs) I'll I'll go. (laughs) Yeah. It's just my little voice inflection to get my little doggy to do what I want. (laughs) It's just amazing. It's like Jedi mind tricks. You want to go for a walk? (laughs) She just shoots, man. It's like, you know, but if I just said, you want to go for a walk? No movement. No movement. Just the voice inflections and the psychology that I can use on my pet animal. Hmm. I would say uh, when talking to someone that you're looking to uh, make a sale to, use of a pregnant pause can be very, very effective. Okay, okay. Pausing is always effective. Silence is always effective. Yes. The more they're talking, the less I'm talking is better. Yes. But it's after. It's the pause you use after you ask Right. How? Mm-hmm. How is always a fantastic question. How should I do that? All right. All right. One open. more. And let them let them have control of the conversation. But really, they're playing into what you want them, want you to do. Another one. Last one. Okie dokie. You got one toast? Oh, I do have okay. one. Ooh, that's tough. Give me a film. That's universally praised that you find utterly repulsive. Ah, I think we've done this before. Hmm. It's praised, but I find it repulsive. Definitely done this before, and I don't remember my answer. I'll tell you what, then I'll give you a different question. Okay. This is a better this is a better one. This okay, is good. fucking. I was great. gonna say right, showgirls, though, by right. the way. Here we go, here we go, here oh, we go. That's a good, now it was great then. Come on. Now that cocaine bear has been a success. And meth alligator has been green lit. What are the next substance slash animal movies coming up? We've had Cocaine Bear, and we're going to have meth alligator. What are you talking about, meth alligator? <laughs> That's that movie has been green lit. Oh, I got it. An they alligator. An alligator that, they gave an meth. alligator meth. <laughs> it's yep. just going to yep. be. Per- and, and they just made a movie about it. I don't know. I got it. But they made a movie. It's been green lit. I got it. <laughs> What do you got? It's so funny to even say it. Molly monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> but Molly monkeys, wouldn't they just sit there like petting themselves and like I don't asking care. for like base beats? I don't know. I don't know. They could be bouncing around it'd be like, a bunch of lights. And it'd strobes. be like a high movie. <laughs> Fast times at Richmond High. Yeah. Except it's you Molly all of a sudden monkeys. put on some good base beats and they'll start dancing. <laughs> so good. Oh my goodness! <laughs> no, that wins. I'm done. No, that's uh, yeah, that's yeah. It's also the show title. Molly monkeys. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Molly monkeys, <laughs> episode fifty. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my goodness! All right, boys, is that a show? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh! There's a oh, there's something we should uh, quickly mention, man. Oh. There's there's huh? Oh, 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 um, dude. So, uh. Jalen Carter's in a world of shit now. Oh, yeah. 
just see that dude like damn bro um so for those of you unfamiliar but um so his teammate and the uh, assistant that died in the crash like a few weeks ago after the title game apparently jalen was in the other car they were racing and so he's not going to be charged with a couple of misdemeanors for racing that yeah so i don't know what this he, he's left the combine to go back to georgia so i don't know what this means he was predicted to be a top five pick i'm guessing this has to hurt his draft stock somehow but i don't know but man oof mm. interesting how things come to light just awful you That's know it's sometimes terrible. just the decisions you know um you know racing bad, bad decisions cars, you know and i and yep. i, I well, look, I mean, they're kids. You see it all the time, bro. It happens all the time. All the time. But, but the fact that, I mean, the, certainly the public, I'm sure people knew about it, but the public didn't know about that. No. Right? No. That, that that was the circumstance behind it. Right. You nope. thought it was just, you know, whatever. I know, I know yeah, on cool. a serious level, I mean, I tell I tell my young, my young boys uh, that I have the privilege to coach, and I say, 10 seconds, boys. Just for, if there's anything that I can ever teach you, 10 seconds, if it doesn't feel right, just take 10 seconds of your life to think of the consequences, to think of what getting in that car, stepping on that gas pedal, doing that first, you know, bump, what, whatever I was crazy. Give 10 seconds before you make a decision. That's it. 10 seconds. Great advice. Great advice. All right, boys. So we'll be doing a, uh, we got spring practice. We'll be underway next episode. Yeah, correct. Next time we talk to you, it's uh, yeah. it's going to be spring it's practice. In, uh, two days. Spring practice on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. And then we got uh, the spring game is what date? In ab April. 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 Like second week, right? Fourteenth. Yeah. All right. So it's I think Friday. the second Saturday. It's a Friday. Friday. Yep. And that's at uh, Inter Miami. Yep. No idea. Not they didn't announce yet, but we assume so because that's yet. a good venue for okay. it, and it's usually open. To it, it is. It was a good venue last year. Yeah. All right. Very good. Well, that's the show, kids. Uh, hope you have a phenomenal rest of the week. Go ahead and uh, get this bad boy dropped. So as always, go Canes. Yo. Bang. That's another episode in the books. The Orange Ball Boys are brought to you by Edmore's Automotive Group. Visit edmorse.com.